What do you mean by a pass transistor logic? Well, my name is Rishi Ramchuk and welcome to the Backwood Engineering community where I make engineering easy for you. So, let us ask ourselves an obvious question. What do you actually mean by a pass transistor logic? Well, let's find out. So, pass transistor logic. So, just like the name suggests, this is basically a logic. It's basically a logic that we are implementing. And this logic we implement with the help of NMOS transistors. So because we are implementing the pass transistor logic with NMOS transistors, this is an NMOS logic. So now, let us take a particular NMOS transistor like this. This let this be a particular NMOS transistor. So now here, we know that this is the gate terminal of an NMOS transistor. So here, what we do is that, in order to implement a pass transistor logic, we take this particular terminal as a control terminal. So in the case of an NMOS transistor, we know for a fact that if in this particular terminal the input is zero, then that particular transistor is off. But if in this particular terminal, if the input is 1, then this particular transistor is on. So that is the case in the case of an NMOS transistor. So now here, according to pass transistor logic, what we say is that if the control signal that is present here, that is, if the signal that is given on the control terminal is 1, then whatever input we give at this particular terminal, terminal A, that particular signal will be obtained at the output terminal Y over here. This is what you refer to as a pass transistor logic. That is, whatever input we give at one particular terminal, we get it. We get the same input at the other terminal, provided that the control terminal, the input given to a control terminal is 1. So, I am writing it down. When C is equal to 1, that is, when whatever input that is given to the control terminal is 1, then the NMOS transistor is on. So thus, in such kind of a scenario, whatever input we give at A, we get that same input at this particular output terminal Y. This simple logic is what you refer to as pass transistor logic. Very simple logic. That is, when we take an NMOS transistor like this, and now here at the gate terminal, we use that as a particular control terminal. And now, if 1 is the input given to this particular control terminal, then whatever input we give here, we will get it at the output over here. This is simply what you refer to as pass transistor logic. So, now the question that you'd be having is, why do we need this? Why do we need pass transistor logic? So, in the previous videos while implementing CMOS logic, we saw that a large number of transistors are required in order to implement logical functions like AND logic, NAND logic, NOR logic. So, so in order to implement all these logics, a large number of transistors are required. So, in order to accommodate these number of transistors, it will take up a large space. So, in order to reduce this, in order to reduce the number of transistors, we use pass transistor logic. But, that's a problem. So now, let us assume that I'm cascading two NMOS transistors. So here, I have one NMOS transistor, and here I have another NMOS transistor like this. So now, let me assume that C is equal to 1 in both these cases. So now, this is the input A, and this here we are getting an output. So here, first we would get this, the signal we are giving at A would go over here, and we'd get an output here, let that be Y1. And now this would go here and let this be Y2. So now here, we know for a fact that every NMOS transistor has got a threshold voltage. So let the threshold voltage of this be VTN and let this also be VTN. Let us take say VTN is equal to say, let us take 0 0.7 volts. So now let me assume that I am giving 2 volt input over here, 2 volt input. So, when I give 2 volt input over here, I expect to get 2 volt output over here. But in reality, what happens is that when this 2 volt passes through first transistor over here, Q1, when it passes through the transistor Q1, the output Y1 would be equal to 
y1 is equal to whatever input that goes here. The input that goes here is this particular 2 volt. That is 2 volt minus this particular threshold voltage. That is 0 0.7 volt. So here, in effect, we would get 1.3 volt over here. Now, when this 1.3 volt goes over here, the output y2 would be y2 is equal to whatever input we get here. That is 1.3 volt minus this VTN. That is 0 0.7. That is equal to 0 0.6 volt. So here, in reality, here, when we give 2 volt, we expect 2 volt to be obtained at the output. But in reality, we are only getting 0 0.6 volt. But logically, logically, we are getting some output, 0 0.6 volt, we are getting something. But in reality, this 2 volt diminishes to 0 0.6 volt. That is the only problem with the pass transistor logic. But this pass transistor logic can be used to implement a lot of logical functions like an AND gate or an OR gate. How do we do that? Well, let's find out. So now, let us see how we can construct an AND gate using the pass transistor logic. So here, in order to perform the AND operation, first we would have a pass transistor like this. First we would have an NMOS transistor like this. This then here is connected to another NMOS transistor like this. So here, in effect, we would have two NMOS transistors. Here we would give A, and here we would give B. And here we would give B, but here we would give B bar. So now, this is how we construct a two input AND operation. And we obtain the output over here, say Y. So now, let us now construct the truth table. We have two inputs. A and B and we get the output Y. So because we have two inputs, we can give the inputs as 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1. So now let us assume the case when the inputs are 0 and 0. So here A is 0 and B is 0. So here first what we have to check is this particular condition that is the control terminal. So here B is 0. So here since B is 0, this transistor is off. But here we have B bar. So since we have B bar, this is 1. And therefore this transistor is on. Next we have to check what we get the input over here. The input here is B, that is 0. So therefore the output is 0. Next let us see 0, 1. So here we have B is equal to 1. So here B is equal to 1. So this transistor is on and this transistor is off. And now here since B is equal to 1, we now have to see what input comes over here. So the input is 0. So therefore 0 comes like this and we get it over here. Therefore the output is 0. Very simple guys. Next let us see 1, 0. So now here because we have 1, 0, the value of B is 0. So therefore this is 0 and this is 1 because we have B bar. So because this is 0, this transistor is off. But here this becomes 0 complement, therefore 1 and therefore this transistor is on. And now since this transistor is on, next we have to check what input we get over here. That is the value of B which is 0, so therefore the output is 0. Finally we have 1, 1. So here this is 1, so therefore this is on. But this becomes 0, therefore this is off. And now we have to check the input over here, which is A, which is 1. So therefore the value 1 comes over here. So now here we have clearly obtained the AND operation. Very simple, guys. So here we have obtained the AND operation using just two transistors. But in the case of a CMOS circuit, we required four transistors to perform the NAND operation and then we had to pass it through an inverter which again had two more transistors. So in total we had six transistors. So these six transistors are ineffectively reduced to just two transistors over here. Next let us see how we can perform the OR operation. So in the case of OR operation as well, we will have two pass transistors like this. That is two NMOS transistors like this. But here, here we would give A. But here we would give B bar. And here if we give B, here the input we give is 1. 
here the input is always 1 but here we give a b bar and here the input is b let's now construct the truth table of this particular circuit we have the two inputs a and b and now here we can take the output over here y so let's take, let's see what the value of y we get so because we have two inputs we have 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 let us now see the output that we get. So first case, we have two inputs 0 and 0. That is the value of A is equal to 0 and the value of B is equal to 0. So because here, first we have to check the value of B because that is what controls this particular control terminal. So here, the value of B is equal to 0. So here we have B bar. So therefore, this is 1 and this is 0. So therefore, this transistor is off but this is on. But the value of A is 0. So therefore, the output is 0. Next, we have the value of B is equal to 1. So here, when the value of B is equal to 1, here we have B bar. So this is 0. So this is off. But here, the value of B is 1. So therefore, this is on. So therefore, this 1 comes over here. So therefore, we get the output as 1. Next, we have 1, 0. The value of B is 0. So therefore, since the value of B is 0, this transistor is off. But B bar, so this transistor is on because the value of here is 1. And therefore, the input A is 1. So therefore, we get 1. Finally, we have 1, 1. So here, this transistor is on. And therefore, we get the output as 1. So therefore, hence, we have obtained the R operation of A plus B. This thus is simply how we use the pass transistor logic to implement the AND and the R operation. As simple as that, guys. This thus is simply what you refer to as a pass transistor logic. As simple as that, guys. There's nothing more to it. So, I hope you guys now have a clear understanding of what you refer to as a pass transistor logic. And if you guys found this video informative, please do hit the like button and join this community by hitting that subscribe button. We'll be discussing about the further topics in the upcoming videos. So, stay tuned, stay subscribed. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.